All right, guys, so here's the review of the San Martin SN019G, AKA the Submariner homage. So I've not actually checked out any of the previous San Martin Submariners. Thought I'd leave that, try out some more interesting pieces because I know a lot of people have reviewed them already, but I thought it was probably about time I checked this one out. Especially because I previously said in Kronos video for theirs, that theirs could possibly be the best one. So I thought I'd better check it out, see how it compares. This won't be a direct comparison review, but I might briefly reference that Kronos. So I've been trying it out for a while. Full disclosure, I was sent the watch for free. Don't have to send it back, but you know the score. It's not going to change the way I do my reviews. Going to keep it 100% honest all the time, no matter what. So question is, is it as good as the Kronos? Is it better? Let's get down to it and find out. So here it is in the new San Martin packaging they now have. It's pretty interesting. It's definitely unique. You don't get anything else like this on AliExpress. So they're definitely trying to differentiate themselves. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this kind of packaging though. Do you like this or do you prefer the other one? Because it has been interesting trying this one out. So we've got a nice screw down lid. And then we've actually got a little bit of padding on the top there. It's like a dense foam padding. And then we've got the watch in there. So the watch just slides out. And then because I've taken some links out, that's nicely sit around that very well. So I'll put that to one side for a minute. Now there is actually other stuff in this box. When I first got it, I had a bit of trouble getting this out. So once you've taken it out a few times though, it does get slightly easier. Okay, so that was actually a little bit more difficult than I said still. Still not as difficult as when I first did it. I really struggled to get it around them. So anyway, these are the links I've taken out. So we've got screw links there. Other bits, we've got the new round warranty card, which is actually dated and stamped. So that is good. Then we've got the user manual to fit in with the new packaging. And then we've actually got some interesting pieces in here. So we've got Spring bar removal tool, which is always handy. And there are actually little cards for these as well. So they will stay in there nicely. And then we've got a little screwdriver, a little stubby one. Do quite like them, they work well. And then we've got this little San Martin tag, which is actually a metal one. It's quite nice. Don't really know what you put it on, but it's a nice little touch. And again, it's got a little space for it to sit in. So it won't be rattling around. So overall, interesting packaging. It's going to be a little bit awkward to store, but that's the trade-off you get, I suppose. So here's the watch itself. And I'm not going to go into massive detail on this because you've probably seen this watch quite a lot. So I'll quickly go over some bits. So we've got 120 click ceramic bezel. A really nice action on that. Absolutely zero play. Sounds really good. And lines up perfectly. Finishing on that is really nice as well. Really nicely machined. And then, while we're around here, we've got that sign crown with the S. I'm not overly keen on that. I wish they'd just use the same as on the dial, to be honest. Because I think that S looks a little bit funny. It looks a bit like a dollar sign, almost. But the polishing's done really nicely. Although it is polished, so it will scuff and scratch a little bit when you're wearing it. But that's just one of those things. And then the finishing on top is just brushed. Again, really nicely done. Nice fitting on those links. Polish detail. Give that a quick wipe. Polish details on the side as well. To tie in with the case. And then that continues down. And then we've got the chamfer details on the clasp. With that hexagonal logo. Matching the one on the dial. So it would have been nice again, as I say. If they'd matched it on the crown too. Just so there was just the one logo. So we've got really nice magnification on that Cyclops. 
it's actually 2.5 magnification on that so that is really nicely enlarging that and it's also perfectly aligned again the indices and everything really nicely finished same with the hands nice high polish finish on them perfect length as well so if I zoom back out quickly show you the clasp so we've got milled clasp the standard Sam Martin one solid end links sterile case back though So when it comes to the dimensions, we've got a thickness of 12.8, diameter of 41, look width of 20, look to log of 48.5, but we have got male end lengths on this, although they do curve down pretty much straight away. So I'll show you what it wears like on wrist in a bit. It does wear a bit better than you'd expect with having male end lengths. So now let's test whether we've got sapphire on this. And the trusty down to let's do and yep yeah, we've got sapphire crystal quickly test that cyclops and yep yeah, that's also sapphire so that is a nice touch now let's check out the loom so you can see we've got quite a bit there already, but let's charge it up, give it a proper chance. And there we go. So as you come to expect from San Martin, really good loom on this. So we've got that BGW9, so you've got that ice blue. And it is pretty much perfect. No patchiness at all. No bits brighter than others. Just really good loom. As I say, you kind of expect it now from San Martin. So when it comes to the movements in this, you can either get it with a PT5000 or an SW200. Obviously the SW200 is going to be quite a bit more because it's a Swiss movement, whereas the PT5000 is the Chinese version. But in my experience, with the PT5000s I've had so far, I've not had any issues. So I'll quickly show you that in action. So, screw down the crown, as you'd expect. Just pop it out twice, actually. And then we'll move those hands out of the way. And then pop it back in. Pop it out once. Change the date. And as I said, really good Cyclops on that. Really good magnification. Pop it out again, second hand stops, so we've got hacking. And as I said before, just change the time. Pop it back in, second hand re-engages. And then just screw it down. You can also hand wind the PT5000 as well. So I said I was going to quickly touch on the Chronos. I'll quickly bring that in now, so you can see it side by side. So again, I've got the black one with that. And they are pretty similar. But then if you look closely, there's a few little subtle differences. One of which being that loom pip. So on that one, it's quite clean. This one, it's a little bit more of a kind of grey colour. Very minor, very subtle difference, but a difference nonetheless. Another more obvious difference is the bezels. So the detailing on this and the grip... It's actually a little bit more obvious when you're looking at it head on compared to the Chronos. The Chronos. It's more on the side. Another thing that's a little bit different too is the bracelets. So on the hand dial you've got more of a taper, whereas the Sun Martin's more of a subtle taper. And then obviously the clasps are completely different. So you've got the Sun Martin branded one, just a normal double pusher. Whereas the Chronos. 
has got the slide lock style clasp. So depends which one of those you prefer. When it comes to overall finishing, they're pretty close. If I had to choose, I would probably say the San Martin is possibly fractionally better, but there's not really a lot in it. Possibly the end links here. This first link, there's a little bit of a gap on the Kronos, whereas the San Martin is a lot tighter. But again, when it comes to movements, they're both the same, both the PT5000. I'm not going to go into measurements because I think they're pretty much identical from what I can remember. But if you want to know more about the Kronos, I'll leave a link in the description. Getting back to the dials, another slight difference I noticed is the Cyclops. The Cyclops on San Martin, as I said before, it's a nice magnification on that, 2.5. Whereas the Kronos, I think it's slightly less, not exactly sure of the number, but it's definitely slightly less. So again, something to be aware of. Other than that, handset and everything, pretty similar. No obvious alignment issues. Then it just comes down to which brand you prefer. But again, if you look at those first links now, you can see that gap on the Kronos a little bit which the San Martin is a lot smaller. So the overall tolerances on the San Martin, I think, are probably slightly better. So all that's left to do now is show you what it's like on wrist, and then we'll wrap this up. So this is what it looks like on my 7-inch wrist, and it just wears really nicely. The attention to detail as well with San Martin is just what sets them apart, I think. The little details like the chamfering, the finishing, nice inlaid logo, the finishing on that, bezel just catching the light nicely the little polish details the polishing on the hands is perfect as well and just the overall fit and finish of San Martins is just top notch you can't really fault them they're definitely a step above most other AliExpress brands because they do pay attention to those details even little things like the packaging they're trying to separate themselves now got their own individual packaging it's not a major issue, obviously it doesn't affect the watch, but again, it just shows that they're paying attention to the little things. So, as I was saying earlier, those male end links, they slope down pretty much straight away, so that's not an issue on my 7 inch wrist. If you've got a smaller than 7 inch wrist, possibly it might be. But, you kind of know what to expect with Submariner Hommage. You know what kind of size you're going to get, whether it'll work for your wrist or not. So the question is, would I recommend this over the Kronos? They're really close. I think a lot of it is going to come down to whether you prefer this kind of clasp or the Glidelock style one. And then obviously you've got the better magnification on that. And slightly better overall finishing and attention to detail, as I say. Other than that, I'd probably recommend both of them. If I had to pick one or the other, I think I'm probably going to pick this on mine. But that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.